we find ourselves in Carmen's upscale gentleman's club, where coat and tie is mandatory and casual sex for money is very much on the menu. The parlor of Carmen's establishment is simplistically elegant, with a chandelier, paneled walls, and imported carpet over the polished floor. Pairs of wing-backed chairs are found in three corners, with a small table in between each pair. A man sits quietly in one of the chairs, smoking a cigar and reading a newspaper. Carmen is at the reception desk, finishing a phone call, and writing in an old-fashioned appointment book. Mr. Ferguson, a regular client, enters the parlor from the interior hallway. Good night, Carmen. Mr. Ferguson? Yes? Before you go, perhaps we can settle your account? My account? Your outstanding balance. I thought I was paid in full. You were, but things have changed now, haven't they? I don't understand. As you know, Mr. Ferguson, you can get almost anything you want here, with some negotiation. Carmen, I'm not sure I... Before he can finish his thought, the door, which Mr. Ferguson had just entered through, opens, and Ellie, elegantly clad in an evening gown, leans against the door jamb. The man in the corner puts out his cigar and begins to fold his newspaper. Oh, hello, Ellie. Hi, Fergie. Mr. Ferguson, some of our girls prefer not to be kissed. That is an act for which they and the house must be compensated. I... You kissed Ellie. You kissed me. I suppose I did. A little. A lot, actually. Shall I run your credit card, Mr. Ferguson? Carmen, I didn't mean... I, I would certainly have... No. Wait. Ellie, I did mean to kiss you. But I didn't plan on it. It just happened. And I'm not sorry for it. That is, unless you were offended. The man from the corner of the room approaches, looking a bit befuddled. Eleanor? Hold on a minute. Can't you see the lady and I are having a conversation? But I've been waiting. But I'm not finished yet. It looks to me like you're finished. <sighs> Carmen, keep the tab open. Ellie, can we talk about this back in your room? Ferguson takes his credit card out of his wallet and hands it to Carmen who proceeds to gently escort the man back to his seat and offer him a drink on the house. Ellie steers Ferguson to a pair of chairs on the opposite side of the room, near Carmen's reception desk. After making sure the man has settled into his chair, Carmen keeps herself busy around the parlor, purposely staying within earshot. Fergie, I... Ellie, how long have we been seeing each other? Please don't tell me you're in love with me. Would that be so bad? What we have is sex, Fergie. It's not love. Maybe that's the way it was in the beginning, but that's not the way I feel about it now. I'm not a woman to you, I'm a plaything. What do you mean? Of course you're a woman. No, I'm not. With a woman, you get the good and the bad. The whole package. With me, you only get the good. And when I'm out of sight, I'm out of mind. No, you're not. I think about you all the time. Stop it. It's true. After you go, somebody else always takes your place. I want to be the one there, Ellie, in your heart and in your mind. And when we're apart, I want each of us to think about the other until we're together again. That's enough. I'm only saying what's in my heart. I'm perfect, aren't I? When you visit me, you get everything you want. You enjoy yourself. You feel good. You're happy. I'm like a drug. But it's all an illusion. I'm a real person. I got problems like anybody else. Make your problems my problems. I can take care of you. If I had a dollar for every time I heard a line like that... It's not a line. I mean it. I love you. You don't even know me. Of course I do. For the past... Your name is Christopher Ferguson. You're 38, unmarried, a senior account manager with Spalding Westinghouse. Your two best friends are Larry and Mo, so naturally they call you Curly, but nobody else does. You enjoy golf and a great Reuben sandwich. You're not a pet person, but you have two turtles named Laverne and Shirley. You can play any woodwind or brass instrument and are now mastering the Highland bagpipes. You have a zen rock garden on your patio and a collection of bonsai trees. You drive a 10-year-old car and you max out your 401k. You plan to retire early and travel the world. Yes, that's right. All of it. Tell me what you know about me. You came to this country from Portugal as a little girl with your parents. Your father was an inventor, a scientist, your mother an artist, a painter. You have one older sister who studies wildlife in the Australian outback. Wrong. What? I'm from Pittsburgh. My father was a steel worker until the mill closed down. He ran off when I was nine. My mother? Well, she wasn't an artist. 
I don't even know if I have a sister. You lied to me? Why would I tell you the truth? If I gave away a piece of myself every time I laid down and opened my legs, I would have nothing left. I'm asking you to open your heart, not your legs. <laughs> then you'd better pull out another credit card. Without disturbing the conversation, Carmen stays glued to her desk, listening intently, keeping an eye on Ellie to make sure she's comfortable. I don't mind if you keep secrets from me, but I don't want to be told lies. I don't owe you anything, Mr. Ferguson. Fergie. I have nothing that belongs to you. You stole my heart. You misplaced it. I care about you. Care about something that matters. You do matter. You matter to me. Am I not enough for you? Am I not nice or good-looking or smart enough? Ellie, I've always shown you respect and kindness. I'm not violent. I don't use drugs. I have a good job. With me, what you see is what you get. It's like that with me too, but I got a bit more baggage. I can help you unpack. Stop it. Stop what? You don't want me. You want what I am when I'm here in this house. I don't want you to be here in this house anymore. I'm not a doll you can take home and pull off the shelf whenever you need a little pick-me-up. Sometimes I'm the one needing to be picked up. I'm up for the challenge. I don't deserve anything more than what I got. Ellie. I told Carmen you kissed me. I assumed so. Unless there are cameras or two-way mirrors in there or something. Mr. Ferguson, this is a highly secure establishment. I would appreciate- Of course, Carmen. I had no suspicions. None at all. Thank you, Mr. Ferguson. Your membership is valued and appreciated. Carmen nods at Ellie and moves further away from her desk in the conversation at hand, giving the appearance of a little more privacy. Ellie, were you mad at me? It felt like when you were doing it. You mean kissing you? You were taking something away from me. I wasn't taking, I was giving. It's sad you don't know the difference. You don't know me well enough to kiss me like that. You were kissing me back. The man approaches again, this time with more determination. Ellie and Carmen exchange glances, and Carmen moves swiftly back to her desk in anticipation of this action. Are you finished yet? I've been waiting. This isn't the time. Mr. Reed, can I interest you in another lovely lady of the house? But I want that one. I have several other wonderful women. I'm sure I can find more than one to your liking. Exchanging looks briefly again with Ellie, Carmen escorts the man through the door, leaving Ellie and Mr. Ferguson alone in the parlor. I always wanted to get to know you better, but you haven't offered much. And it seems the things you did tell me weren't true. I need to protect myself. I would like to share that responsibility. Is there anything I can say to make you forget about all this? I can't forget. But all you need to say is leave me alone and never come back. And I will. So you're willing to keep seeing me? Of course. You're paying me. Is that the most I can hope for? Fergie! Before Ellie can finish her thought, Carmen returns to both the parlor and her desk. I see. Carmen, I'll settle my bill now. That much, huh? Yes, Mr. Ferguson. If it were up to me, Fergie, our conversation would be no charge. But I'm on the clock and I gotta pay the house, you understand. It's okay. But I can make it up to you tomorrow, away from the house. You mean, like a date? More like a debt. I'll repay you in kind for the conversation. With more conversation? It's the least I can do. I accept the challenge. Challenge? Of getting to know you better. I will need to be particularly charming. <laughs> Just be yourself. Can I ask the same of you? You could, but that would mean you can no longer see me here. As long as I can continue seeing you elsewhere, I would give up my club membership. No one's asking you to do that. There's this great little place on the waterfront that serves a fantastic Reuben sandwich. We can talk on the patio, have a cold drink, watch the boats in the harbor. I think you'll like it. I know the place. I saw you there once a few weeks ago sitting on the patio. Was I alone? You were. And you didn't say hello. I sat behind you near the windows wearing a floppy hat and sunglasses. Alone? I draped a sweater over the back of the chair beside me to make it look like I wasn't. You were near the railing, watching the ships, and never once looked back to see me. I can't believe you were so close to me and I never knew it. You don't have much of a roving eye, do you? I suppose I don't. Meet you there tomorrow afternoon, say, 1.30? I'll be early, to save the best table. One near the railing. Ferguson kisses Ellie's hand gently between the fingers, and then tips his hat to Carmen before walking out the main entrance. 
There's a skip in his step as he walks out the door. You're listening to Scintillating Stories featuring Ships in the Harbor, written by John McKinley, adapted for radio play by Shislane, featuring the voices of Ryan of Intervision, Shislane, Stephen Farbman, and Daniel May. Edited by producer Ryan. Produced by Intervision Entertainment and What Happens After 2 a.m. Sound effects by Soundbible and Zapsplat.com. Beethoven String Quartet No. 3 in D Major, provided by freemusicarchive.org. For more shenanigans from Intervision Entertainment, check out our website, intervisionentertainment.com, or better yet, become a visionary by subscribing to Intervision Entertainment on patreon.com.